Hey guys, I'm Red. I wanted to make a beginner's guide to the Steadicam, and this is my Tiffin M1. But every sled breaks down into four main parts. Three masses, this one usually being the camera, and two masses at the bottom, usually a monitor and batteries, connected by the post, and to that, the gimbal handle. To understand the parts, you have to understand how the Steadicam works. First, it adds weight to the camera, which makes it much more difficult to move in space. Think about how much easier it is to get handheld footage with a bigger camera than it is with a small point-and-shoot camera. It also moves the center of gravity to a place where you can hold it. So you would get smoother footage if you just carried the rig from the center of gravity here, but it would be pretty heavy. So to isolate you from the sled, there needs to be a 3-axis gimbal near the center of gravity. Many lighter steady cam rings will stop there, but this would make it impossible to carry, and to make fine framing adjustments very difficult. So to do the lifting force and isolate the rig from your body even further, you have the steady cam arm. This is my Tiffin G70X. Of course there needs to be some way to attach it to your body, so that's where the vest comes in. But before we get to that, let's get the camera ready to balance. Make sure your camera is ready to go. Do you have a way to power it? whether it's with battery or off the sled? Are all the filters in? Is there a memory card in the camera? Have you taken off all unnecessary weight? With this camera, I need to add a VTC plate, although it's not the best way to do this. Also, if there's any dangling cables, you'll want to tape that down. Use a camera rod to find the balance point and mark it. If you have a lot of time, you might want to mark the balance point with other lens combinations you'll run into that day. If you have a particularly side-heavy camera, you should mark the balance point in that direction too. Then take the V-mount plate off of your Steadicam and place it directly center of that mark. This allows you the most flexibility when balancing later on. Now watch me awkwardly try to screw this plate in while I'm on the wrong side of the camera. It's a lot easier if you're not trying to shoot yourself doing this. As the AC is doing that, you should be making sure your rig is ready to go. Cable and power everything up. And before I put the camera on, I like to make sure the gimbal is at the top, so that it's not too top heavy before I move it to the balancing pin. Make sure you have a good grip on the post so it doesn't slam down. You don't want to look stupid when it gets on the balancing pin, and you have to fight it from flipping over. It breaks the most important rule of Steadicam, always look cool. If the camera is really heavy, you might want to extend the post length, too. I also center out the side to side and the forward aft on the top stage. This way I have the most flexibility if small tweaks in balance need to be done later on. Say they use a different brand battery or change the lens. This could also be done with the camera on or at the end of your last job, but I prioritize going home and usually forget. Now you're ready to pop your camera on the top stage. Make sure it's locked. And then cable everything up and make sure you're getting image on the monitor. Try to keep this cable neat. You now want to set up how high your monitor is going to go. To make it easiest for you to see the shot. You'll want to set out the batteries and the monitor to the right positions, compromising between ease of seeing the monitor and how likely it will be to dynamic balance later. This will come with experience. The further out they are, the more resistant it is to pan forces. So it'll be easier to fly in straight lines, but you're also more likely to kick it or hit it when you're doing switches. You also want to make sure that your monitor and battery brackets are aligned with your camera and your post. My rig has a yellow line down the back telling me which is centered. Some of them are registered, and some of them you'll just have to look to see if it is. Now when you think you're all set, you're ready to put the gimbal handle on the balancing pin here. And I like to unlock it, and with my left hand, grab the gimbal and sort of balance it with my thumb. And then with my other hand, pick up the rig. Hopefully you have an assistant to flip this around for you. If not, you can do it. You want to make sure it's fully on the pin, hearing a snap. Now we already know that it's going to be very bottom heavy because we set the gimbal so high up on the post. 
So let's set the post uh, vertical to the floor. The twisting movement makes the sliding easier. That's what she said. Now I'm feeling with my left hand the weight of the bottom. And I've memorized how heavy it normally would be so that I can get the drop time correct as fast as possible. And it's still a little fast. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Uh, I usually like between two and three seconds, two and a half seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three. So that's about two and a half seconds. You do not need to have it vertical to do the drop time every time. It's still the same. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three. Based anywhere that it is. Now, how do you choose the drop time? If you're going to be doing a lot of tilts, you want to have a very long drop time uh, because it will make the tilts much easier to do. But if you're going to be doing a lot of pans, especially whip pans, you probably want a faster drop time. It'll allow it to find horizon faster and it'll fight uh, tilts more. So now I can see that it is definitely front heavy. So you want to adjust the camera backwards using the dovetail plate before you use the forward and aft knobs. Once you get that close, then you can adjust with the knobs. Um, I can see that it is side heavy, so I want to hold the post level. I can see there's a bubble in the back of my sled. And I can feel with my hand which direction it wants to go when I hold it level. And then I have a bubble level at the bottom of my sled to see the forward aft level. Now that we have static balance, it's time to test out dynamic balance so that it'll pan level. The way to test this is to spin the post, and you want it to spin perfectly level. You can see that the longer you let it go, this one gets pretty angular. We want to fix that. So, to fix it, we could move the monitor, but we've already set that to the spot we like it in. So I'm going to move the batteries. And you just pick a direction, reset the static balance, and see if it's fixed the problem. If it's gotten better, if it's gotten worse, and that way you know which direction to go in. And usually it's very small adjustments. But this time it isn't because I rigged it in the last cut. So reset the static balance, the drop time is the same and the side to side should be the same. And we can see it's gotten a lot better. It's not exactly perfect, and if you're doing a ton of whip pans, maybe I would get it a little bit closer, but for the most part, this is what I would fly it as. You could spend all day doing this and never get it, and it's not crazy important, especially if you're using trim, to, if you're using a forward nap to set your trim, your headroom. Uh, that'll screw up your dynamic balance anyway. So now that we have that set, it's time to put it back on your docking bracket. And it's time to put it on the arm to see how, how that is set. 
but you got to put the vest on to do that and I haven't talked about the vest at all yet so let's talk about the vest this is my vest it is the Tiffin Exo vest and it is pretty different from a lot of the other vests available for study cams so I don't want to go into it too deeply on how to fit it but if you want to find a video the guy that invented it Chris Fawcett has a video and I'll link to it in the description but there are some important things that every vest has uh, one of them being the pads that are at the bottom here you need to be sitting on your hips they should be centered with your hip bone and when you step you don't want it to be hitting the vest because uh, you won't be able to go up steps and they'll fall asleep if you're sitting on a, like an apple box for a long period of time it should also fit fairly tightly and you want the vest to be centered on your body not not twisted in any way also every vest has a socket block this is one of the most important pieces of the vest and is the connection between you and the arm so my Steadicam vest is right-handed operators it's standard mode and so my socket block is on the right side but if you're a left-handed operator or a goofy operator your socket block would be on the opposite side they also make back mounted vests that mount around here for the socket block, but I'm standard, so it's on the right side. Pick up your arm and slide the male socket block into the female socket block. And it sort of leans forward, and then you can turn the bottom screw to lock it. You don't need to over tighten these screws to make it safe. Just regular finger tight is perfect. Also, when you pick up the arm, make sure that you're holding it the whole time. It is loose and bounces around and could hit you in the face, hit the camera, hit somebody else in the face. Uh, always hold on to the arm. Now that that's set, you're ready to pick up the rig. Uh, you want to get close to the rig and bend over. You don't want to bend your legs here. I like to joke that you bow down to Garrett for giving you this great job. Then you want to walk up very close to the rig so that the arm does all the lifting for you. Unlock it and pick it right up. So now my arm isn't set at all. I can see that this one's going down as this one goes up. But before we set that, we need to set the socket block. So you want to be standing correctly. So stand perfectly straight like you would normally be standing on a regular day. So I'm back. and just see where the rig wants to go. I can see that it wants to push away from me and to the left. So I'm going to grab this Allen key. These are here, not just for looking cool. And stick it in the Allen key spot here and change the direction so that it sits right where it wants to, right in your missionary position when you're standing straight up. And this is just adjusting the side to side motion, whether it pushes out this way or pushes too close to you. I don't like when it's up there. Now if it starts to fall away from you in this direction or fall into you, you need to adjust these screws here and I usually like to take it off when I do that. You can adjust it really tiny increments but it makes me nervous. So mine was falling away so I need to tighten the top screw and to do that, you need to loosen the bottom screw. And I happen to know how many threads I've shown. You should be memorizing how many threads show here because it'll always be the same. Make sure your bottom one is tight and pick up the rig again. And 
and see if that's where you like it to be. And that's how I would set it. So now you're ready to adjust the arm, and each arm is different. So you should really look into what the manufacturer says on how to adjust the arm. The G70 and the G50 are different because they have two knobs on each segment. One of the knobs is the ride control, and that adjusts your isoelasticity. Essentially, the more ISO it is, the easier it is to boom from the top range to the bottom of the range, and it also separates from your body movement more. It separates your movement from the sled even more. But not every arm can adjust that. It really depends on the type of springs you have and things like that, so I don't want to get into that too much. But every arm has a lift control, and you want to change the lift I'll put the rig on. You want to adjust the rip, lift so that the arms sit slightly above level and so that they track together. You don't want one doing all the work when the other one isn't doing any work. You want both arms doing equal work. So that was a brief introduction to the Steadicam and all of its parts. I want to thank you for watching. And on the next week, we'll talk about it a little bit more in depth if I make it. If not, I don't know. So if it's here, it's here somewhere in the link. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to learn more, you should check out the book by Jerry Holloway, The Steadicam Operator's Handbook. It's a really great book. And you should take one of the workshops because there's really no way to learn without people pointing out individual things that you're doing and actually getting a rig on and trying it out. Thanks for watching.